So what are my favorite Plugin Alliance plugins? Let's talk about them. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily Bowie. I'm a producer and engineer here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're taking a look at and going over my top five favorite Plugin Alliance plugins. Timestamps are available for your convenience, so feel free to skip around. But if you'd like to help the channel out, consider giving this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite PA plugins are. So these are the plugins that always seem to find a spot on my mix and sometimes masters. Now I don't have the subscription bundle anymore because I just don't think that it's the best way to do business when it comes to the tools that we need for our own business. But I will say that I do appreciate Plugin Alliance for recognizing that and allowing their customers to also purchase these products. And these happen to be the ones that I actually own. So what are those plugins? Well, number one is the SPL Transient Designer Plus. The Transient Designer allows you to control dynamics independent of the overall level. The Transient Designer can transparently shape the attack and sustain characteristics of the instrument you are working on. The attack and sustain knobs are the primary controls of this plugin. So for example, if you need more punch and a tighter point on things such as kick and snare, just go up and increase the attack on the transient designer. And vice versa, if you need just the opposite of that, go ahead and take away some of the attack dulls that point. Same goes for the sustain. This is really good for snare drums that have a bit too much ringing or maybe the bottom of the snare mic is dominating the overall sound. Just pull down the sustain to control that. That technique is also good on cymbal bleed in certain drum tracks. You can also add back in the sustain if the sound is desirable, like in guitars for instance. There's also a parallel knob included to blend in the amount of this type of processing. I actually do use this this plugin a lot in parallel, but the way that I use it is on a separate bus or aux track. I have two set up, one for kick and one for snare. So how I like to use the transient designer is on my kick and snare. And I've got some tracks up here with uh, the drums soloed. So let's take a look at how I like to use that. I don't like to put the transient designer directly on the track. I like to use that in parallel and I'll use that on my kick as well as snare. And as you can see, this is a drum kit that was all programmed, it's all in stereo, and there's actually not really a defined snare, but we'll take a look at the kick here. Now the way that I have the kick drums set up is that I've got them routed to a drum group. They are also going to a drum bus, a drum crush, and then the transient designer D1. Now for the snare, that would be the D2 track. So let's take a listen at what the transient designer in parallel is doing with the kick. So I'll play you a little bit of the drums here. Not too bad, but maybe the kick could use just a little bit more punch, a little bit more poke through. So down here where I've got all of my parallel compression and just other parallel processing tracks, I've got the D1 set here, it's highlighted in blue, and I've got the transient designer on that first. Now I've also got a distressor here, and that's just to add a little bit more punch and volume after what we're doing with the attack here. So let's see what that sounds like when we bring it in. So yeah, it's really adding a lot more punch to that kick. It defines it a little bit better, it makes it poke out just a little bit more so that we can feel that kick and that beat through the entire drum kit. So let's do some comparisons here. I'm going to mute the parallel track here and see if it's something that we need or maybe it's something that we don't need for this. 
So that makes a pretty big difference. I mean, it's doing subtle things, but and we're just sort of blending that in. And this is uh, probably a little too much. I just wanted to make sure we were hearing what the transient designer was adding to our overall kick sound. And this is exactly how I would use it on a snare track on the D2 here. Same exact settings. This is something that I do have set up on my mixing template. And if you would like to pick one of those up, you can get one in Pro Tools or Luna. And little side note, coming soon to Studio One users. So be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, if you would like to support me and the channel, please head over to my website, fairairmusic.com. You can pick up a template or my mixing course that comes with free multi-track so that you can mix the song yourself. And right now it is at a huge discounted end of the year price. So if you're looking to build up your portfolio for practicing purposes, this is a really great way to get better and help promote your yourself. Coming in at number two is the Dangerous Bax EQ. The Bax EQ is known as one of the smoothest sounding EQs and it's wonderful for mixing and mastering. I definitely use it for both. It just has a natural tone to it. It's not altering the sonic characteristics that are going on. So you're able to cut down on any of that phase delay. The Bax EQ has a permanent home on my mix bus as well as a go-to on my mastering chain. I primarily use the high pass filter and will mostly boost in areas that need attention and filling in on the overall collective sound. This is one of those plugins that I could actually justify owning the hardware version. Now the Bax is one of the first things that I've got going on on my mix bus. I've always got the high pass filter engaged there. It's a little bit low right now. Uh, it's probably typically would go up to 38 on that and sometimes I'll add a little bit of air back in on 18 and sometimes I will put this on the 7.1 just to kind of bring up those uh, higher mids just a little bit it kind of fills everything out I'm not really using the uh, low pass uh, filter that much and every now and then I will come down here and where we really just need to fill out some more body here. I'll, I'll definitely push that up a little bit and then cut at the same time so that we're just getting that spe that specified area to fill out a little bit better. So let's take a listen and see what this does to kind of our overall mix here.
So it's really doing some cool stuff there. It's really tightening up the low end. Uh, for this particular song, probably don't need to fill any of the other lows back in there. But I'm definitely liking the air from the 18K shelf. That really does add something nice and gives a little shimmer. But this right here is great. Like I said, this is something that I wish I had the hardware of. And I'm not really a hardware, you know, mix engineer. I um, I think you can do everything with the plugins that you have. I mean, tons of number one hits and Grammy award winning songs and records are made with just plugins. Now, I do tend to lean more towards hardware on the going into a recording. I think that the circuitry is just way better to record through. So I am a fan with hardware when we're in our music production phase. And so, but, you know, for mixing and mastering, you can get amazing results with plugins. So that is how I use the Dangerous Back CQ. Number three, Brainworks Console SSL 4000. What a great SSL plugin. I think this is one of the best sounding SSL emulation plugins. I do think it actually sounds better than the UAD version. And you know how I feel about UA. But this is the one that I will go to 99% of the time. Brainworks has this amazing TMT, which is tolerance modeling technology. These console emulations were created using the original schematics in collaboration with the SSL console. This is designed to give you the choice of individual SSL analog emulation channels. Each one is ever so slightly different sounding with different characteristics, just like an actual SSL console. Brainworks has also added powerful plugin only features such as THD, which is a compressor mix parameter and V gain for authentic control of the analog signal path. This is going to give you more input and drive. But what I use the Brainworks SSL on mostly is going to be electric guitars. There's just something about the EQ and dynamic sections that work so well together and complement the sonic characteristics of the electric guitars that sound so familiar and desirable. I love using the Brainworks console, the SSL 4000 on electric guitars. This is probably what I'm mainly using this plugin for and I'm probably using it 95% of the time. So let's take a listen and see what this can do for our electric guitars here.
So yeah, I mean, it's keeping the same tone. It's just adding a little bit of grit on there. We're just sort of finding what EQs we want to poke out a little bit. And we've got our high pass filter. And it really helps make this guitar still sit in the back. But also we hear it. We know it's there. But it's not overpowering anything. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's keeping the original tone intact. And so now we can add a little bit of compression to that too, just to help tame it. So there you go. Great EQ, great dynamic section here. And it's really just filling everything out. You know, these some of these uh, moves, very subtle. Didn't even use this band. And we're still keeping the, the, the tone of the guitar. Uh, we're not, you know, totally changing that. We're keeping what the artist wanted when they recorded it. But we're just uh, bringing up uh, the good parts of it the good sounds of it and we're controlling that here and we're just getting rid of some of that lower um, kind of rumble that junk that just you know fills out things that we don't want to fill out we'd rather go ahead and fill that out in our EQ section here and this is just such a good plug-in um, I just really love um, all of this here it gives a little bit more drive and we can select you know whichever channel we want we've got 72 of these things and they all sound slightly different they really do you could sometimes you've got your eq moves and you're like i don't know something something's kind of missing you can just toggle through these things right here or if you remember one you can uh just go in and type type that in and there you go you can uh, pick whichever ones and then as you're going through those it just might all kind of fall into place like finding the missing piece to the puzzle and there's your sound that you need so love 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 the brainworks console ssl number four the brainworks digital v3 fun fact this was brainworks revolutionary flagship product it was also the first commercially available mid-side plugin this plugin has api style proportional q filters the unique bass and present shifters each offer a selection of three different tilt filters that balance and unmask hidden details in your mixes along with transparent high pass and low pass filters global gain scale control which makes proportional gain changes to all parametric shelving and bass present shifts filter at once this preserves your balance across all all bands as you dial in to the perfect EQ setting. High frequency bands up a range to 40k to sweeten and add air to high resolution audio tracks, mixes, and masters. Now those are some amazing features that this plugin offers, but what I mostly use the V3 for is the mid side features. I absolutely love the mono maker. I use this a lot on mixes and masters that need work with unmasking central focus frequencies such as kick and bass. It can really tighten up that area and have a nice mid focus. The main highlight of this plugin for me is the mid side EQ section and with the soloing engaged you can really pinpoint those masking frequencies and clear up an overall mix or master. I'll tend to dip out a little bit more on mixes and then finish up with more subtle moves in mastering. Again, down here on the mix bus is where you will find the Brainworks Digital V3. And I absolutely love this, love this, love this plugin. You know, once you figure this thing out, this is really going to make your mastering process a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. First thing I like to do is turn on this mono maker and I'll show you what that does. Can you hear the 
bass and kick drum get a lot tighter, get a lot more focused in the middle. Listen for that again. We'll start with it off. Love that. Usually going up to 100 there. I want everything below 100 hertz in the middle. I want it focused and tightened in the middle. And that is what this controller is doing. So next, we'll probably go in and turn on the mono section and the stereo section on their high pass filters. There's no reason for us to get anything down here. So what I usually end up doing next is somewhere around 300, somewhere around 400 a lot of the times. And I will make that cue just a little bit narrower. And I've got this auto listen engaged and this auto solo engaged. And here's what that does for us. Go over to the frequency and hit play. And then just click on this. So now this is actually soloing those frequencies in a boosted form so that we can find where that little bit of woofiness, a little bit too much rumble, just kind of masking area that we need to pull out. And for mono, it's usually gonna be around 300 and 400 for me. Okay, right there is a little something. So focus on the mids there. Focus not necessarily on um, your mid frequency in a stereo format. Think of the middle of the song in that section where we've got things up in the middle and listen to the difference with this in and out. We're getting rid of some of that stuff that kind of trails off on the kick and the bass and anything else that's down there in that frequency range. We're pulling that out and we're kind of just making room for it, right? So all of the stuff that's kind of trailing off, like when you see, um, you know, all of your dynamics down here and the bass is usually hitting around here and the kick, well, we're they kind of it'll it'll tend to trail off, you know, after each each hit or each pluck or, or when it's playing and then right here is we're just ducking that out because we don't need that sound and what it does is it tightens that bass and that kick and we're in the mono section here so all of this is up front these are all all of this is being played in the middle so we're making room for stuff there um maybe tweak some of these a little bit but also down here and this is a good a good spot and sometimes I'll go up to 500 but this is going to be in the stereo section this is the next uh, knob that or a, this is the next area that I will be checking and so let's have a listen to that now remember this is in our our stereo so this is going to be left right kind of on the your sides here
So to be quite honest with you, I don't really feel like there's a lot of um, muckiness and uh, stuff that's distracting in that area. So let's go on down here and see if there's anything. So maybe around between 200 and 250. I'd say right around there. We'll pull some, some out there and see what that sounds like. So for me, when we bypass this, the 245, all of that information that's on the sides there and the stereo just gets a lot clearer, especially some of those pads that are going on. Let's take another listen. Here's with it off. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, something else that I like to do on the stereo here is go ahead and drop this down to a shelf and we'll go all the way up to 40 and see what that sounds like. Now, I know they say that we do not hear anything above 20, but man, I mean, you can, I mean, you can tell the difference. Whatever this is adding, it just makes it sound better. When you take it away, you're like, so this low pass filter goes all the way up to 30K. And then we're adding a shelf at 40. Now, sometimes, not every time, but by adding that in and then using this adds something a little special too. So let's see if, if that's something that's, you know, beneficial to our song or if it's taking something away. Okay, so what I'm hearing, especially on those guitars, adding this in there just rounds it out. And with this engaged and this taken out, we're still losing something. But we're getting something that I believe is beneficial to the overall sound by having this uh, low pass filter in at the same time boosting at 40K. I mean, you know, you, you really just kind of go through these things you test things out, you know, try them out and see if they work, see if they don't. But it's always something that you can remember when you're like, you know what? I do remember adding that low pass filter in and boosting at 40K. 
cutting here at 30. It doesn't seem like it would work on paper, but you heard it right there. So anyways, that are those are the main features that I use this for. Uh, sometimes I will go ahead and use the stereo uh, widener. It works. It's um, a little goes a long way. So let's let's listen to that. So that sounds kind of cool, pushing those sides out a little bit more. You've also got some uh, different panning uh, knobs here. I don't ever really touch those. You can link this up and have it work as stereo or left and right individually. I'm usually just keeping it with the mid side there. And then down here, you've got a lot of those uh, different bass shifts like I was telling you about and presence and dynamic. Um, I don't get too involved with those. I will kind of uh, fool around with this a little bit and there's different ones that you can um, circulate through and the same thing it goes on here with your uh, stereo section. But that's about it and then you can also check your balance and your correlation here. That's also important to keep an eye on. But yeah, this plugin is on my mix bus just about 100% of the time. Now there will be some other uh, occasions where I don't, you know, need all of these um, options. And I will just go with the uh, Pro-Q3 here and work on some of my mid-side EQ there. And rounding us out at number five, we've got the Mog EQ4. This is always on my mix bus, always. Its design allows for exceptionally low phase shift across all EQ adjustments, which helps maintain the integrity of your mix's original sound. These EQ points are pretty musical and not so surgical, so it sounds really good over a variety of different things. I mainly use these EQs in boosting frequencies. Yes, you can boost in EQs, not just about cutting. You can boost them. I repeat, you can boost boost your frequencies. One of the things that's always, always, always engaged is the airband. Yep, all the way up to 40k, usually nothing over one or one and a half dBs. There's just something about it that really sweetens the overall mix and fills everything out. It may be subtle, but doing a comparison with this in and out, you really feel something's missing when it's taken out. So I always leave it in. Now with the Mog EQ4, I really am just using it for the air band. I know it's that's a little repetitive uh, coming from the, uh, I know that's a little repetitive coming from the digital V3, but it just sounds better in. I always have this engaged. So this is what uh, is going to be on as soon as, as I merge my audio tracks into my mix template. So I've always got that going on at least a dB of the airband at 40k. So I'm mixing into that. So you know, if I go ahead and use the V3 at 40k, that's just because I'm adding something else that's making it sound better and more enjoyable. But this is always on. So immediately my mix is going to be uh, going through this. So let's take a listen and see what it's doing. And remember, we, I'm leaving this, leaving this on. So we, we've already got it shelved at 40K and then high passed or low passed at 30K. So yeah, it's really spreading things out, especially when that organ comes in, really kind of pushes that out to our sides 
and just adds that little nice um, refreshing kind of twinkle up there and that that kind of airiness that we really enjoy in these types of songs. Now I know that I said this was my top five but I have a bonus. I felt that I really couldn't complete this favorite group of plug-in alliance plugins without talking about the Acme Opticom. And this machine is an optical compressor with tube sound for days. I have this on a parallel track that I will send the overall drums or certain elements of the drums to and control the level of that sound with the return of that channel. It really adds a nice saturation tone that is controlled on the plugin's output and speed of that compression. It really fills out those areas that tend to get buried and adds such a nice tone. Sometimes when using other plugins, plugins that kind of have this same concept will cause things to sound a little too trashed out for my taste anyways and I never get that with the Opticom. That's why it is always ready to go in my mix template. Now the Opticom, the way that I have that routed is also in a parallel format but I have that on my overall drum bus and so that's all of the drums that are going through this. Uh, this is also going through the stereo and through the Opticom here. So let's take a listen and see what that does for our drums. And I'm, gonna, I'm usually going to have that on a fast response. We're really looking at the uh, output here. And I've got that amp set to in. Because we're looking to, you know, trash this up a little bit. So it's adding a lot of energy back in, right? It's uh, filling up some things. It's also distorting in a little bit. And sometimes that's very desirable. I don't necessarily think that this is the perfect track, the perfect song for this technique. But, you know, for your more rock style songs, uh, even some pop stuff, like I think that would be really good. It's, um, it's something that you could also add on your bass uh, to give it a little bit more distortion and fill out a little bit more. Um, it also has uh, found its way onto a piano before. Now, it might not have so much, but, you know, something that's pretty rocking or pretty like uh, old school rock piano uh, style of song. This uh, kind of works really good on that. I may tweak the settings a little bit, but um, yeah, I love this. You can do a lot with it, even add it on your vocals. I mean, there's a lot of, of distortion plugins out there that to me just sound like it kind of like trashes out uh, the sound a little bit too much. And I just like how... I don't know, professional sounding that this this plug-in sounds. I think it's just really well made. Uh, this is another thing that I would love to own the hardware of. Uh, I don't know how often I would use it, but I just think that it's super cool. And it just, when I need it, it always seems to work. So there you have it. My top five favorite Plugin Alliance plugins plus bonus plugin. If you enjoyed this video and found something helpful in it, please consider hitting the like button and giving this channel a subscribe. It really helps me out and it allows me to continue to put out more content like this. Also, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Plugin Alliance plugins are. I'd love to hear from you and know what you thought about my top five. And don't forget to check out my mixing course at its very, very low of the end of year price, as well as my mixing templates. It's the best and easiest way that you can help this channel out. So thanks so much for watching y'all. We'll talk soon.